Welcome to Fiery Discourse, your podcast and media featuring dragonesses, female dinosaurs, and other similar stories and scalies. I'm your host, Lud Melanon, and with me are my co-hosts, Anne Gron, Lucky Evie, Striker, Matt Machine, Jordan, and our special guest this episode is uh, Charvon. Today is Charvon. our... Charvon. Charvon. Back, people. This is, uh, today <laughs> is our 60th episode, and we're discussing the 2019 My Little Pony Friendship is Magic episode, Sweet and Smoky. So, let's get things started. Yep. Now, th- yep. Now, this is the second episode that we are releasing on My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, and the first yep. one we discussed was around uh, season five, season six or so, and this I is season wanna... eight. Up, oh, go ahead. Sorry. sorry. I just want to first say up, up front that episode, the one that introduced Ember, Gauntlet of Fire. It's one of my all-time favorites of the show, but that's not what we're discussing. We're discussing this it's one, which yeah, is, yeah, is fine. Is fine, I guess. Yeah, but... so we're watching. Uh, well, yeah. We're... MLP Friendship is Magic, one of my all-time favorite shows, period. But yeah. I'll get more into it when, when we get into the podcast. That's Sorry all for good. It's all good. No, 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 it's all good. It's all good. But yeah, yeah, it's all good, uh, man. As the show uh, went on, it changed in very interesting and kind of unique ways. And probably the biggest change that the show ever had was during Season 8, Twilight Sparkle decided to start a friendship school to teach others about friendship. And it had uh, different species attending the school, one of which was a dragoness named uh, Smolder. And this, in my opinion, was a very bizarre change because the first episode, you know, season one, episode one, Celestia makes a big deal about Twilight not learning friendship just in a book. And here she is seven seasons later teaching friendship in a book. Yeah, honestly, in my opinion, this goes to show how how much Twilight has grown as a character. Basically, student has become the master, and now she's... And now she's, uh, and and now she's teaching a new generation of not just ponies, other creatures, taking yes, the yes. ideals taught. And it would have, and it would have been bizarre if the characters weren't that great, if the new characters weren't that great. But that's the rub. The new characters were pretty fun. Oh no, yeah. they definitely, definitely are. You know, and of course, uh, the one we're going to talk about today is the uh, dragoness named uh, Smolder. And this episode in particular was from uh, season nine, which is the final season. And this is probably one of the uh, more middle of the road episodes, I guess. And it, of course, yep, it's the episode. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> it's less than average for me, but nowhere. It's weak, but not bad. No, we'll get to no, not at all. We'll get to what bothers me in a moment, which is exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which oh, we'll, get we'll to that definitely idea. get to that. But, <laughs> but for now, uh, the episode begins with Smolter entering Twilight's office to ask her something. And right off the bat, Smolder is a very cute character, and her design is a really, really nice one. The orange scales and magenta tuft of hair. It makes her unique compared to the other dragons and dragonesses that we have seen on the show so far. And I like how also, I really, uh, I really do like the variety of color we're getting from the other creatures, you know? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. That's uh, another plus. But yeah, one uh, interesting fact is she's actually based on a... Whimsy Weatherby, who was a dragoness from the uh, third generation of My Little Pony, mm. and someday in the uh, distant future we will talk about her. Even Absolutely. though G three is yeah, G three quality. It's it's definitely better than G five. Let's put it that way. It's yeah. it, it's insert. I, honestly, I feel the opposite. G five is at least better. Well, for as for G three, insert generic female scream here. <laughs> Okay, okay, we get it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we got, okay. yeah. It's all good, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, what happens is uh, she asks Twilight if that she could leave class and that she'll be away for a week. Uh, she tells Twilight and Fluttershy that her brother has been having a rough time since he left her school and that he's very uh, sweet and kind. Right off the bat, we get a pretty good joke with, twi- with a spike being stunned that the words sweet and kind can be used to refer to a dragon. And another change in this uh, series by this time uh, Spike actually grew wings. Yes. Which, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I love nice gives you wings. Change. Yep. It's a nice change. <laughs> and it's, uh, I think it's a funny because for me, it was a little hard getting used to it, especially after uh, not having it for such a long time, you know, to, that to for me, like the last couple of seasons he had it. I'm really happy that Spike got his wings and he's getting some, at least some pretty good episodes because one thing to keep in mind, I'm pretty sure you mentioned this before. Before season four's inspiration manifestation, Spike episodes were usually seen as quality poison among the fan base, and that's mostly yes, because of the biggest yes. reason that in a way, none of the. Even ro- he did none- have some good episodes, in my opinion, but 
none yeah, of the uh, writers really knew how to write for Spike because they were, tr but in my, but ever since Inspiration Manifestation in season four, Spike episodes progressively got better and better and better, and we've seen his actual growth over time. And to me, this indeed, is visual yeah. symbol, much like with Twilight getting her rings, Spike getting his wings is visual representation of how. And I love that. Also, yeah. on top of that, yeah. Also, we, on to, we, but I but but on a more negative note, ugh, the irony that they're building up with the with yeah. the big twist reveal. But we'll get yeah, to that. Yeah, we we'll, we'll, we'll get yeah, to that. We'll twist. get to that. Yep, we, we will get to that later on in the episode. But yep, uh, for now, uh, Smolder wants to go to the Dragonlands, but Twilight isn't sure about her going by herself. Spike offers to go with her to make it sort of a field trip, and. It turns out to be hatching season in the Dragonlands, which causes Fluttershy to be overjoyed at the process of seeing it. And Yay! he makes some really adorable faces that, you know, yeah. pretty good. No, the last gosh, season got a lot face. more expressive. That's one thing to really note about uh, Friendship is Magic, that the last yeah. season in particular got very, very expressive. Totally well, expressive. Friendship is, Mag Friendship is Magic was always an expressive show. That's one of the biggest, that's one of the biggest advantages. The other previous seasons, other previous generations, since they didn't really want to, uh, since they, since their main priority was making toys, they oh weren't really all that expensive. They were more, they were more stilted to, to try and make them look more marketable and cute, which ironically made them look more horrifying. And the same problem with Generation Five, where they regressed back to trying to hold back on some of the expressiveness, with the exception of the movie as team. But with Generation yeah. Four, since their main priority was not to sell toys, but rather tell interesting stories with great characters we get some of the funniest expressions you'll ever see in a tv show yeah yeah definitely mm. that that definitely is true but yeah uh twilight decides to let fluttershy go but then she has to write a report on what she saw in the dragon lands which okay yeah that is in character for twilight let's be real yeah, yeah. We cut to the uh mm -hmm. iconic theme song which also got a couple of cosmetic changes it showcases uh, more ponies as well as the new friendship school and some of the students there also, yeah. Rainbow Dash being a Wonderbolt. Yep, that and, too. Yeah, nice that too. And yeah. at the end, uh, the throne room is actually the design from the 2017 My Little Pony movie. And, and that was a and pretty good uh, reuse of assets there. Al although, we, although, in retrospect, the movie itself, mid middle of the road. I liked it. I, I personally... I, I, that great, I, but just say, I enjoyed the My Little Pony movie, personally. I thought it was uh, pretty good. I need yeah. to see it one of these days. I'm just going to finish it's, the show first, though. It's worth checking out. It's definitely worth checking out at least once or twice, you know? I just oh, hate yeah. one. I, I just, it just has a cliche I absolutely Yep. But back to the story. But, yeah, getting back to this yep. one. Yep. Yeah, that's a lot of tension there. But, yeah, uh, after the theme song, the episode uh, continues with Spike telling Smolder about all the things he has planned for her brother, which includes uh, making friendship bracelets and a sharing circle. Mulder tells him that uh, her brother doesn't care about that, but just wants someone to ex accept him for who he is and his sensitive side. There's Gee, a really funny I joke with us Spike not good. getting it and the scientist to sing show tunes. Yeah, no. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it's a it, pretty this, good... This, uh, proves, this proves... This is one of the many things I love about ML MLP Friendship is Magic. It's legit funny. And no, not in a sort oh, definitely. of... Oh, someone definitely. does something silly and everyone laughs. Tee hee ha. No. There are some legit great jokes in it. Smolder in, mm -hmm. in this episode is absolutely and lutely funny, but it doesn't just play to her tough girl role. She play. It's not just her being all tough and aggro mm -hmm. and her girly things are so stupid. Especially considering how a previous episode, which I hope we can cover in the future, actually acknowledged she has insecurity problems. But again, we'll, if yeah, if, we, we might get to that. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I understand all, where you're coming from with it. It's but yeah. long story short, MLP Friendship is Magic is legit funny. It has legit yeah. definitely, and, and, and is not afraid to make jokes at the character's expense, unless it's Spike. Because well, one yeah. of the biggest problems is they've yeah. made too many jokes in the past to his expense. He was basically yes, the yes. butt of the joke in the previous season. Yep. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. But yeah, uh, what happens now is a. Uh, as they approach the dragon lands, a smolder feels at home with the uh, smell of brimstone and the sharp rocks around. She goes to get her brother, and it's here uh, where we get to probably one of the better parts of the episode with Fluttershy going to look at the dragon eggs. Uh, she begins cooing over them in such an adorable way. And, and then, we get uh, the reintroduction of, of Queen Ember. Yep, Ember, yep, Ember shows up. 
automatically she gets a great line in with two marks that, you know, it can't hear you, it's just an egg. And already, <laughs> even though we're, uh, we're discussing Smolder in this episode and she's the main dragonist focus of this episode, Ember steals the whole thing. She is the best part yeah. of this episode by and far. Uh, she has so many yep. great jokes. Her with follow-up, her, like, uh, her fo- her follow-up yeah. joke, which is a callback to her not being able to tell ponies from yes. other ponies. She's like... Yeah. You're the you're yeah. big sprite. No, no, no. You're, you're yeah. the no. That's and she calls her Apple Dash too, which uh, maybe she's shipping them. Put them. <laughs> yeah. I I still I person I person I personally ship Rara Jack. Okay. Yeah. Well, she's Ember. Shipping. In the future, there's a thing called Tumblr. <laughs> uh, there's another hilarious moment uh, that happens just seconds later with Fluttershy asking Ember if all the eggs are hers, and Ember just reacts that with complete horror. Which is again just oh, so perfectly delivered, and the expression on her face too really helps sell it, in my opinion. Do you yeah. know what my Do you know what my figure would look like if I <laughs> these were all mine? Exactly. It's gonna look a lot perfect, better, that's perfect. for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, but it turns out one of the uh, Dragon Lord's jobs is to watch over the eggs. Fluttershy decides to help out Ember, and it turns out that the eggs should have hatched by then, but there is nothing that they could do. There's another hilarious moment, this time from Fluttershy, where she says, we're going to do everything we can to help you into the world. Ember asks her how, and then Fluttershy just stares and admits she has no idea. Which, again, really just uh, sells it uh, with Andrea Libman's delivery. Yeah, this is, yeah. Fluttershy, I have some words for Fluttershy, but I want to get to that later during a big point where, because, trust me, Fluttershy is one of the standout characters. But enough with the good stuff. Let's get on to what really hurts. What yeah, yep. what happens, yeah, uh, we come back to Spike, who is uh, knitting his friendship blanket, and then we get to see a garble, and the other teenager dragons arrive. They begin oh, mocking yay! Spike for various reasons, including his wings and his friendship blanket. They set the blanket on fire, much to Spike's annoyance. Then Smolder returns, and she does a secret handshake with a garble, and it turns out that garble is Smolder's brother. Dun dun dun. dun, dun. Much dun. to Spike's to Spike. Hooray! We get to see more more of Garble, and it's going to be an episode about him and his redemption. And notice my lack of sincerity. Yeah, yeah. I just don't like. I don't like how they how they use Garble. And honestly, Garble yeah. overall in Dragon Quest and in this one, I've never liked him. The one time he worked for me, or at the very least, I could stomach him, was in Gauntlet of Fire, where he was a was was when he was just a straightforward, not when he was a straight. Forward, he was a straightforward yeah, villain, villain, yeah, a villain. Yeah, and, and straightforward on, on top of that, one of the things I hated about Garble was he was basically just the typical boy stereotype. Where, oh, look, uh, and, and Goblin of Fire, it was weakened when we see that even girl dragons act like this and that. But basically, Garble was just annoying for me in Dragon Quest, and really annoying here because he's like, yeah, uh, just a girl, yeah, boy, yeah, definitely, definitely, yes, we'll yes. Get to that, but. I did also enjoy I, I did also enjoy what they did with him in uh celestial advice, like yeah, Starlight man. and Princess Ember pretty much roasting him on the spot. Yeah, yeah, that was a good moment. <laughs> like, not but literally this one, figuratively, yeah. but yeah. But yeah, at the very this least, one. I do appreciate that there is a consistency here where the ponies are even the male ponies represented as your female uh your stereotypical female things. Uh uh pretty they they like uh uh what are typically associated with more girly or feminine stuff uh things of that nature whereas the dragons are always represented as uh the, masculine. your, your masculine, typical boys yeah. uh more masculine uh just uh physical uh contact rather than uh uh being all cute and uh all that stuff it, 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 it been... works in that they show that they Cultural are differences. disparate Yes, yes, exactly. They they did Honest, a good job with that. Honestly, yeah. I'm just I'm also glad that they didn't just make it like all dragons are boys and all ponies are, are women. Like they have female dragons clearly and they do act similar. At e- in Gauntlet of Fire, there's one dra- I were Dragon Lord, I would make burping a compliment. Yeah, yeah. Voice by, by Nicole Oliver, Oliver, believe it or not. Yep. yep. Voice by yep. Nicole Oliver, my name is Mar. But yeah, but, I mean, but, uh, but shows basically that as well. But, but basically oh, definitely, yeah, even now her. we have now we're stuck. Now, now we have a whole episode where we're stuck with Garble. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, yep. Sarcastic yep. yay, everyone. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. It's yeah. how we'll, I feel about work. We'll, yep. We'll, uh, yep. Well, we got to talk about it. So let's get to it. But what happens is, uh, 
Smolder basically tries telling the other dragons what she learned in friendship school. What I learned in friendship school today is... But, but yeah, uh, one of the dragons the mocks... E. Yeah, one of the uh, dragons mocks her. Smolder threatens the dragon as he backs off. Smolder then tells them to leave Spike alone. If they have a problem with him, they have a problem with her. And I do like Smolder and how she interacts with the other dragons. That it's clear, you know, she's not a part of their... She's still a part yeah. of their society while still being away from them. She adds a yeah. very fun dynamic that, yeah. you know... You you kind of get like a combination between the pony it's, and the dragon in this one, especially with le- her. It's legit proof that even if she adopts some of their ideologies and if she learns from them, it doesn't mean she's any less tough or f- or something to be feared. She doesn't Most lose her edge. She doesn't become a. She doesn't be. She doesn't become girly. But she. But yes. she learns how to direct it. Exactly. Like God, exactly. Like- yeah, it's like Garnet, but uh, yeah, a little more emotive, and you know that, or Amethyst yes. even. Like she, she has the capacity to learn, but she's still tough to the freaking nails, you know. Yeah, definitely. It's, definitely. it's, it's, it's not like Starlight. As, uh, it's not really uh, like Starlight uh, Glimmer, who I'm, once she learns her lesson, she becomes a different character entirely. Yeah, right. Uh, Matthew was saying. Sorry. I would view it more just as uh, Smolder is basically just like the rest of the dragons. It's just Garble and his gang are douchebags. Yeah, uh, dude, absolutely that, douchebags. That's another good point. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely and dicks. And it's so, not uh, that they're um, guys, it's that they're douches. They're yes, douches. That, that is a very they're, good point. That is an dicks. excellent point right there. So uh, she tells uh, Garble that Spike wants to hang out with him as the other dragons make fun of him. Garble leads to the lava pit as Spike is confused because Smolder said that her brother's sweet and kind, and well, he's Garble. She said that Garble's toughness is just an act and that he's a softy deep down. And Smolder asks if uh, Spike is changing his mind and trying to cheer him up. Uh, Spike tries to bond with Garble uh, during a uh, lava jumping, but the dragon bullies him at every turn. And it's at this point where the lava jumping portion kind of reminds me of SpongeBob with the uh, the I had an accident episode, you know. Funny, I just somebody my turned the mountain upside down. Yeah, it really reminded me of that in a way. <laughs> yeah, oh, so, I thought, oh, yeah. I tried again. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. This <laughs> mo- yeah, and this moment ultimately, uh, it and this moment here and a few others ultimately just feels like uh, the relationship Brian and Quagmire had, where Brian actively tries to be a good person person to quagmire but quagmire just cannot stand him yeah, yeah. for That's one bad. reason or another yeah, th- but, uh, but, yeah. Unlike, but unlike family guy which is meant to be mean-spirited this yeah. is this just comes across as mean. this just comes across as mean for the sake of just trying to show mean. off how insecure insecure garble is which doesn't More work for me because very much so mean, yes yes th- th- it doesn't really work for me personally because it, we've never we because with the exception of a couple turns, Garble is just kind of a bully. He's just yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of a there's dick. No indi- with... There's no indication that he's just he's with he's with others. He's around his sister for goodness sake. And yeah, I know yeah, later exactly. in the episode and... he's like, "I've been bullying you when you're not looking," but clearly you can see she's paying attention and she doesn't yeah. like it. And we'll talk more Absolutely. about, uh, especially stuff with the uh, overall message of the episode. We'll definitely talk about that near the end of it. But also, now, it's uh, also it's funny. Like G- Smolder and Garble are pretty much like Tatsumaki and uh, that taller sister from One Punch Man, and that they're both, mm-hmm. you know, freaking like one's supposed to be the older sibling, except they're shorter than the other. Or like uh, Alphonse and El. Edward Elric, Elric from Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, Shout out to Striker. Yeah. I will exactly, say though, yeah. there is a there is a relatable moment where where during where during the, where when he's pushed into the lava, Spike gets water up his nose. And yeah. honestly, as a person who used to swim a lot, I relate with that. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, water that, up the that nose does. Happen. Yeah, water up the nose sucks. It does yes, suck. oh, definitely. Oh yes, I I think we've all been there. But yeah, now we actually cut back to Fluttershy as she's trying to read a bedtime story to the eggs who are just staying inert. There's another funny moment where she tries to sing a song before Ember cuts her off, thinking that dragons aren't much for a touchy-feely stuff. Again, going to the whole uh, concept of that. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And then we'll get to we'll that get in to a that. little bit. But yeah. yeah, The eggs are Honestly. shaking, and it turns out they have been just quivering for days on end, and Ember has no idea why. 
And then we come back to a smolder, Garble, and Spike as the dragon attempts to bond with Garble. Uh, they do things such as eating cupcakes, flying, and talking about their feelings. But the red dragon is not budging. He even goes so far as to shoot fire at Spike for calling him Gargar, because that's his, <laughs> uh, him and his sister's special uh, nickname. That's the yeah. one. That's the that's the one joke that I kind of that that actually did get a legit laugh because yeah. honestly, I feel like anyone can relate to that. Yeah, don't. There's certain yeah. things and certain traditions that you only associate with certain people. There are some exactly. things that are yes. sacred. Damn yes. it. Yes. yes, that is exactly like me and right. My sister. It's like what Krillin yeah. thinks. It's like what Krillin thinks that he and Lindel and and then they have in the in the uh, Team Four Star Bridge. Little green. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, little green. Only I, only <laughs> yeah, I can call yeah. him little green. Isn't that my real green? Oh, did they? You'll see me. Did Yes, good, good reference right there. Yeah. So anyway, we then uh, cut to a group. The uh, teenage dragons removing a large rock from a volcano, causing Which, yeah. a lava cascade. Well, and there's one thing here that's weird. The lava looks like it's running at a different frame rate than the rest of the show. It looks very really? weird to me how, how it was actually moving. I don't know if that was like an animation error, because again, they did this with Flash. And if they accidentally set like the lava frame rate to a different thing than the rest of the frame rate. But it looks very strange. But yeah, yeah S- Smolder yeah. and uh, Garble are uh, lava boarding as Spike decides to wait for them. We get to see Fluttershy show up and she tells Spike about a problem with the eggs. Garble is throwing uh, lava balls at Spike, causing Fluttershy to actually raise her voice and startle them. Yeah. yeah. This, is, <laughs> yeah. this is where I'm getting at. One of, yeah. the, one of the most important things to know, know about this moment, why people would say, why is this important that Fluttershy shouts and stand up for Spike? Because in the, in the previous seasons, Fluttershy lived up to, ultimately, to the oh, last yes, part of yes. her name. She was she shy. Was terrified she was of timid. dragons in general. She was, basic, she was basically a doormat. She was terrified of dragons, as she said, and she always had confidence, and she always had confidence issues and standing up to herself issues. She was basically a Tim... In, in the early jo- show, she was another punching bag where a running gag was basically her ter- timidity, where basically a leaf falling on her basically caused her to faint. Whereas yeah. Here, Jerry's- ever since uh, freaking, uh, what was it? Uh, ever since putting your hoof down, yeah, she has also she come into showed- her own. And She's I do like to- how they did character development for her as well in that way. You are they, absolutely they, right with that. They, they've they shown how far she's grown, how she's willing to stand up to dragons, which she was be afraid of, and for, she was so afraid that she would, that Rainbow Dash had to basically drag, haul her ass to to the front, to tr- and even then she wouldn't go. To me... Then there was- yeah, and then there was Dragon Quest where all that went out the frickin' window, which yeah, yep. goddamn, yeah. what the hell, Fluttershy? Yeah, uh, but it, but as she said in that episode that was trying to make fun of the fans, she it took a long it takes a long time to, to be confident. Well, yeah, I know the line yes, you're talking yes. about. We, we yeah, understand but, completely. We understand. But as she pointed out, and as I relate with, she will put her foot hoof down when it's required. Yeah. She did. It doesn't yeah. change completely, but she does. But she does apply what she's learned when it's necessary. Yes, yes. And then uh, what happens is uh, Fluttershy tries to explain that Spike is there to cheer up Garble, which causes the other dragons to mock them. And it's here where we get a Spike and and a Fluttershy deciding to tra- to switch tests. Spike is going to look out for the eggs, and Fluttershy is going to try to teach Garble about being kind. And now we cut to what is undeniably the best part of the episode with Ember trying to imitate Fluttershy <laughs> and coming off as completely aggressive. And th- this is so hilarious. Like I say, even though yeah. I'm talking about Smolder and Smolder is the focus of this episode, Ember is the standout. Ember is the yeah. one that is definitely, definitely the best part of the episode. Bye Ember bye. Yeah. Me. I thought, I thought, I thought, I said, exactly. I said, cookie, cookie, go. Like, exactly. Me, yes. This, yes. It, this, this is that this was, is, this is the ultimate demonstration. I'm sorry to always undermine you, but I just have to no, say it's that okay, it's okay. to me, this is the ultimate demonstration of why MLP's, MLP's humor works so much better than the other. Because it understands character. Yeah, it, it understands shows, character. Also, exactly, it definitely shows, understands it, character. It could have just, it shows that Ember is, a, is actually retaining what she's learning, so she's growing, but she's also at a point of desperation where she's willing to try anything so she's basic it shows just how well defined these characters are 
it shows how much Ember, even as much as we don't really see much of her, we do see how far she's coming as a character. She's willing to try new things embarrass herself yeah we understand yeah, she's, she's trying, trying to try new, new things. things she's trying to actually uh exactly she's trying to try new things she's trying to uh i'll also be hilarious the ponies as well while yep. still uh being herself and of course like you said she is absolutely hilarious yeah, so, uh, like, yeah. Also goes how she loses her earlier. patience at a bunch of babies okay yeah uh matthew were saying this also okay. goes with something i said earlier that uh ember is absolutely still in that boy stereotype and she's trying to do what the ponies did, the girly thing, but it comes off as a very boy way of doing it. It yeah, comes like, off as a little aggressive, too. Honest, yes, exactly. Honest, honestly, that boy stereotype thing, when you say that, like, that's a tomboy. There's a, what I mean by the boy stereotype yeah. is Johnny Test or Lincoln Loud. Yeah, Basically, we understand. But to me, I do agree with what you're saying. It, that's a great way to show, that's the one, that's a great way to show how stereo, how, caricatures or tropes like that can be hilarious when when they go against what they do like yes a, yes exactly. Ember, i think we can all agree that is by far the best part of the show well or at least one of the best eh, more or less there we'll are better parts better but we'll get yeah. to them yeah we will eventually but yeah for now uh spike arrives and he tries to help out ember he notes that the ground is supposed to be hot and it turns out that there's supposed to be molten lava there and the, but there's not, and the eggs are shaking because they're cold. Hey, wonder how that's happening. Yep. And also, Spike how did, uh, has how an idea you... of how it happened. How did they not put that together earlier? Well, eh, again... They didn't, start sh they didn't start shivering yet, so... Eh. That's probably... Well, she did say it happened for a couple of days, but yeah, that is a good point. But it's a kid's cartoon, and logic, you know, isn't I mean, really and also, too, too much of a thing. Well, well, Ember is definitely tough. She's not the brainiest dragon. As well, she's more or less. Yeah, well, we'll get, that's, yeah, debatable, but yep. Uh, we then come back to Fluttershy. She's looking for a smolder and Garble. It turns out that uh, Garble is busy uh, playing the bongos and performing uh, beat poetry, which is something that I never thought would have happened location. in this show in a million years, but... Garble and is a is beatnik. Listening. Yes, yeah. exactly. Casual uh, bongos from a uh, sister location, too. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, See, I knew yeah. I hated Garble, but I didn't know it was because he was a beatnik. That added an extra yeah. layer. Yeah. That yeah. just added only, a layer of annoyance to him. If and, only if and, only he was in the movie The Beatniks that was on Mystery Science Year 3000. I oh, God. Lines, oh, but my that God. would have been a funnier <laughs> one. P3K. Yeah, and small. Oh, that would have been like, bet, way, way even though, uh, Yeah, and even though Smolder's jo joining him, like doing the whole snapping thing like she is still smoldering hot for it yes yes like she is on a hot streak with that <laughs> yep. <laughs> but it Master turns Dean, out that, uh, there. but yep then we cut back to spike as he's showing ember that the other dragons are taking lava from the underground to have to basically swim and relax and to do lava boarding and that it's ember is ember. enraged at this and she demands them to put the, the rocks back a nice touch occurs because Ember is the Dragon Lord, and they basically are so scared that they instantly do it. Yeah, and... I like, like, to me, that's part of what I, I just love. Honestly, if you, if this was R-rated, she would... She, You'd be she, swearing up a storm. You, you just swept <laughs> out. You just come, yeah, I definitely could happens. see that happening. <laughs> you're fucking counting our eggs! What the shit?! You're, yeah, it would basically yeah, definitely, like, definitely, definitely. That would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it would be, uh, it would be like when uh, you're, you're performing an abortion go. on a you're a performing an abortion okay. on a grand scale. Okay. Yeah. 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 That, let's, it's like that let's one Christian, into that. Yeah, yeah, it's like Christian Bale for uh, from those uh, Batman outtakes where he's like, yeah. Just on fucking line. Yeah. Right. I definitely like, get sad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But anyway, uh, getting off all that, but yeah, yeah. what happens is, uh, what, uh, sorry, <laughs> but yeah, what okay. happens is that the other dragons are basically trying to move the lava back, but because lava is a liquid, it's an impossible task. Spike suggests to Ember that they could move the eggs to a warmer climate, but they're way too fragile for that. Ember then orders the other dragons to head to the hatching grounds, and they'll have to heat up the eggs themselves. We then cut back to Fluttershy as a garble confronts her about, uh, what she saw. And as mentioned earlier, we get to see more of her character development because she's not afraid of Garble, and instead she's legitimately interested in uh, in his poetry. 
We then see her uh, playing the bongos and attempting some uh, beat poetry of her own, which, okay, that's uh, equally not as good. She, I mean, it's honestly, fl- yeah, it's Flutter yeah, Sky it is, it is so much better. funnier, but it's intentionally supposed to be bad. But it's really no different than the poetry that Garble does. And yeah, it's... intentionally bad is still bad, people. Come on. Yeah, but but it was Be. intentionally bad as Be a nicks. joke. Be... Yeah, it's just, just... yeah, it's like the, it's like that beatnik from uh, Gen Five, and uh, also that one uh, beatnik club from another goofy movie, an extremely yeah. goofy movie. Sorry. That, yep. It's uh, a good reference. Pretentious, right there. pretentious, eight, pretentious numbnuts. Yeah, That's no but anyway, uh, getting off our thoughts on beatniks. Uh, anyway, Garble is afraid of being a poet, and he hasn't been able to create any since Smolder left. He's afraid to write it because he thinks the other dragons are going to make fun of him. He says that he makes fun of Spike so that the other dragons won't make fun of him. I like, too, how Smolder's reaction to this is so good. She is absolutely disgusted at this, and Fluttershy is enraged, claiming that Spike is stronger than Garble ever would be. Because Spike yep. is not afraid to be who he is, and yep. although I will, say, I, I will yeah. just, uh, first of, a couple things. First of all, Smolder, you're in the room when he was doing it. You know, and, and you and you're like, don't say, don't, don't. Honestly, I was expecting what she's like. You've been making fun of Spike uh, for Smolder for Garble to just say, well, I haven't been very subtle about it. And second, I have expect Fluttershy to say, Cleva. We've done this story before with Rainbow Dash and Daring Do. Oh, and also sm- and also Smolder with the dress. Wait, you wear a dress, Smolder? Okay, okay, Fluttershy, you're on thin ice right now. <laughs> okay, that would honestly be a little funny. Yeah, but, honestly, yeah, yeah, it would, it would. Yeah, but that comes to my point why Garble doesn't really work for me. We've done this story before with, with Rainbow Dash trying to hide that she likes Daring Do and Smolder coming to terms with her feminine her enjoyment of femininity and wearing a dress and yeah like yeah, again, she's still girly, but she's still okay. tough as nails for it again also, math machine smoldering hot also <laughs> one more one one more little thing then i'll stop st- yeah, st- yeah. honestly i expect i expect someone to be at what one point like i know you like he dude i'm sorry i can't hear you jordan no 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 it's okay, it's okay. No, no. yeah so, someone, uh, someone's on her and talking to her sorry let no, me sorry, uh, As I was trying to say, uh, I expect one point to be someone to be like, "Hey, Garble, I know you like making fun of Spike because he's women and all, but um, you keep doing that. We might the Crystal Empire and the Changeling Empire, both empires. Spike is considered a very important and valued person. Will wage war on the Dragon Kingdom. So yes, yeah, and might flay your ass for it. So that's that too. That too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Man. I kind of, I kind of, I was hoping for. T- for 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 small for Garble to be like, oh, well, oh come on, you, is Spike really a champion of a kingdom? And Flash should be like, no, champ, but Sp- Spike is not a champion of one kingdom. Exactly, he's a champion, he's of, a two champ- ki- he's a champion he's a cha- of two kingdoms. <laughs> yeah, uh, what happens is a uh, Spike uh, suddenly what? appears and he t- brings them all to the hatching grounds where all the dragons are trying to use their fire to hatch the eggs, but nothing is happening. Some of the other dragons begin laughing at Spike as they let out hotter fire. Garble arrives and he lets out some more of his poetry as the other yeah. dragons laugh at him instead, which lights Stop fire hot enough response. to hatch the eggs. Yeah, and honestly, this Garble's... was foreshadowed throughout the episode with the yeah, laughing fire, yeah, by the way. it was, basically, yeah. Uh, Garble's poem basically boils down to, I'm not going to repeat it because, again, it's not very good. It's basically yeah. not caring about what others think and to just be yourself. Uh... And then it's here we get to see the eggs actually hatch, and they reveal the baby dragons, who are just absolutely adorable. They did, yeah. they did uh, a good job making them yeah. very, very cute. They're honestly, not them, but damn it, they work. Honestly, honestly, I still think baby Spike is cute. I still think, yeah, baby yeah, is, yeah, yeah, I gotta agree with you Spike. that. Yep. Also, Fluttershy's reaction at the end, like, oh, it's yeah. basic preciousness. It's it very much is so. But before that happens, uh. The other dragons basically make fun of Garble, and Ember steps in to defend him, calling him the one who saved the dragon eggs. Smolder adds that she originally thought to make fun of others like the rest of them, but she learned to celebrate differences. Ember agrees and asks Garble if he could teach her how to write poetry, followed by the rest of the dragons doing the same. And now it's here where I have a problem with this moral. I have a mm-hmm. very big problem because of one reason. Are the dragons doing that because they learned anything, or are they doing it just because Ember said so? 
That, yes. That's something that really felt like when I watched this, even when I watched it for the first time and I rewatched it for this uh, podcast, it felt really just wrong. Like the dragons August. didn't learn anything. They're just doing yeah. it out of like cow out of fear for their. Leader. You know what would have been better? What would what would have been I mean, better is well, if one of the dragons actually point pulls out a blanket that Spike made and is like, I use I. Sorry for exactly. making fun of you, Spike. Yeah, this exactly. Blanket. If they all had a little bit of it in them. Like all of it was innate within them, a little bit of like, you know, yeah. a little so, fragility yeah, or a little thing that they hide from the others yeah. to feel that they would be teased. It would make it feel a little bit more, uh, a little bit more justified. Whereas this, it just felt like, well, Ember says we got to celebrate differences, so uh, let's and, celebrate uh, our differences, people. I, and, I, I, w- yeah. I, I would, I would go harp on this more, but then again, it's Ember saying it. I'll. Um, yeah. She tells me to. Yeah. She tells also, me to. Also, it's to, up to interpretation, honestly. Like, if she, yeah. if, they're if, not. If, I don't think they were afraid of this, but I mean, that that could also be said. Who knows, honestly? Honestly, so. if Ember told me to go jump in a fl- pit of lava, I would do it in a heartbeat. Oh God, okay. my view uh, okay. is a little bit different. Uh, I think that that's kind of the joke here, and th- this is probably me giving too much credit to the show. Uh, because they are the stereotypical boy tropes, boys are typically uh, stereotyped as idiots. So them not actually learning a lesson kind of fits with that. And that, and that, that that's part of the reason why I don't like the boy stereotype personally, because it makes it paints all boys as dumb and idiot, idiotic. Oh yeah, I, so it's like the I, whole fairly odd parents thing again. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Where you're coming from? Oh, exactly. Boy- all boys are stupid and all girls are superior. Like, come yes, on. Yeah, yeah come on, that stuff can get pretty, yeah. I don't, want, I don't want people flinging sexism at me, but I'm a boy and okay, I'm yeah. attending a, a university with an acceptance rate of 34%. Mm. Think about that. Indeed. Yeah, I, yeah we, we understand. Also, I'm not into sports. I'm not into gross things. In fact, I'm into watching animated programming about t- is. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm into an animated program about talking dragons and talking dogs. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Screw you. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, what happens is uh, the episode, as uh, you know, Charvoon uh, b- b- previously said, uh, it ends with Fluttershy basically cooing over how adorable the dragon hatchlings are, which they, they very all much are. Them. So. Yep, it's adorable. Yeah, stop her before she takes all the babies, and, please. Yep. Of course, uh, Friends love- Magic would end with this season, uh, season nine, and then they would have the uh, spinoff Pony Life, which I never watched <laughs> because they didn't really appeal to me at all. It just, I saw some no. screenshots and I was like, no, it no, like, uh, it, I don't want to watch any of this. You know, what, uh, you, know what, you know what it's like? It's basically yeah. Asbro's response to Teen Titans Go. They're like, oh, Cartoon Network's making just a show from, like, that the pretty much screenshots. Makes- it really Honestly- has that kind of vibe. Okay, to be fair on uh, Pony Life's part, they were at least having more fun with it. Like, all the actresses, you cannot... Oh, no, you could tell that right away. Like, you could oh, tell yeah. that it was just them to cut loose and have fun. And I feel like uh, if it was, like, its own... Uh, if it, I feel like if it was made a couple of seasons earlier, it might have been a little bit better received. But for it to be mm. after the big finale in that, it feels a little I bit... Off. It feels like a middle... It feels... It feels like a oh, middle gosh, finger. Jordan. Okay, yeah, yeah. It feels like it, f- it basically feels like a middle finger to the fans. Like, this is what you are to yeah. us. You're basically the yeah. audi- you're basically the audience for Teen Titans Go, man. You're basic. You're basic. Yeah. We're, this ba- we're doing what Teen Titans Go did. Look to the fans uh, who love the original. Flip the middle finger and say it's for kids. You shouldn't be involved in this. You just fuck you. Okay. To be fair on Teen Titans Go, and to be fair on Pony Life in general. Uh, Pony Life, they're still having fun with it, more or less. A lot more than Teen Titans Go, honestly. And the only things I like about Teen Titans Go are the Doom Patrol specials. Hands down. They are the only things worth watching on that freaking show. I stand by that to this day. You do you, I do me. Okay. But yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> of course, uh, after G4 would come G5, Giggity. which was uh, widely considered a disappointment after G4 for several reasons. And Ugh. fun thing... Last time when we did an episode on uh, My Little Pony Friends of His Magic, which of course was the episode uh, Gone Little Fire, of, we made a best. joke where we remarked that G5 did not have any dragonesses in it, and 
Well, we were wrong. We have to admit we are wrong because they were yeah, all dragging wrong. this is in G5. Yeah. There was one when we recorded that episode, to, but okay, we're just we're uh, correcting this for the statement. It. We know now, we know better, and we will talk about uh, G5 and G5's uh, Dragonus later on, and that'll yeah. be very, very interesting. Oh, boy. Also, yeah. And if, and, if, and if I return, get ready for more snark and more... Yeah, yeah. yeah it'll be... Yeah, get ready for a way strongly in worded... Uh, yes, get ready yes. for some strongly worded things from our boy Sharp. That'll, that'll, that'll end. be very, very interesting, yes. But now mm-hmm. it is time for the uh, question of the episode, which is... Were you a brony, or did you know any bronies? I will go first, and I will say, yes, I was. I first saw the show in uh, 2011 while uh, channel flipping. At first, I didn't think anything of it. I watched it kind of scoff, but then I kind of uh, got into it. I was part of a uh, My Little Pony forum for a brief time, which led to the uh, meetup in uh, Amps- in uh, Rotterdam, which you can find out more about that story on the other My Little Pony episode we recorded. Mm-hmm. A little bit of a plug there. But yeah. Uh, I did know a couple, mostly from the forum, because where I lived, uh, I live in a kind of rural area, and uh, there's not really that many people here, especially people that would watch something like uh, Friendship is Magic. But as a whole, I feel like the uh, Brony phenomenon is something that it was lightning in a bottle. I feel like it was the one thing that, like, it, it would not have happened 10 years earlier, and it would not have happened 10 years later. It happened at, like, the perfect time, like, the planets aligned or something like that, because it was just when social media was starting to become predominant, but it wasn't ruined by, like, you know, big corporations. It was when you could still have stuff like uh, dedicated fan forums to things without those being uh, basically uh, ghosts at this point. And it was a time where people were starting to be more open about, um, you know, liking things like that, while at the same time uh, still having their own uh, takes on it. I feel like, again, uh, I definitely was a brony, and I kind of fell off the show at around uh, season five, I think. Mm. I kind of got uh, bored of the whole Starlight thing. I came back for the movie, which I enjoyed, and I watched the rest of the show, which, in my opinion, the show was pretty even keel quality over long, over, over the entire course of the show. But I do feel that around the end, it kind of started to stumble a little bit. I feel like season nine was the best note to end on, because I feel like if it went for a season ten... They might have done it a little bit too far. But well, yeah, then again, not... it would be a lot better than G5, maybe. Yeah, but I feel like, how how long can you make something? Because Frontiers of Magic isn't something like Simpsons or Family Guy or SpongeBob that is more episodic. Yeah, absolutely. It's more like, you know, it's lore-based. And for that reason alone, it's probably very hard to keep something running that long and still have it being lore-based without starting to bump into, like, uh, plot holes or, you know, things like that. But yeah, that's my answer for it. Uh, and Ron, what would you say? Were you a brony, or did you know any bronies? Um, I I knew one. Like th- this one's a little interesting because I think I knew like one uh, brony in like middle school. But that, but how I got into that is was at first I saw a few episodes at my cousin's house. We uh watched we watched like uh, a few episodes in uh, season one, uh like which honestly again I have an origin story of how I got into MLP, which you can watch in the other podcast episode. But yeah, I started out watching a few episodes and then I was a little hooked by that point because what they did here definitely looked interesting. Uh, so much so that I was pretty hyped for season three come later. But, yeah, I don't think I was always a brony starting out, but uh, I definitely got hooked a little bit. Uh, uh, It's basically just the uh, freaking... uh, It's basically that one episode where Rainbow Dash uh, is kind of a closet daring do reading fan. Uh, And I think a lot of people here can understand that sort of... uh, origin story because they've gone through it let's be fair yes <laughs> yeah so yeah i uh i both knew and i i both knew people who are bronies there's this one person who did art of twilight with midna on her back on her back which was basically just you know two twilight princesses <laughs> oh man but yeah I, I, that's gonna be both for me next yeah. uh striker 
actually have uh, two friends who used to be in the Brony fandom, mm. but I am only going to mention one because I'm pretty sure their audience would not appreciate it if I mentioned them. All good. All good. We understand. Oh, yeah. boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, like, most of the, the friend that I'm going to mention, um, their uh, work, like, their early work all revolved around ponies, actually. Mm. Like, nowadays, like, even though they don't do much in the way of that, in fact, most of their work revolves around uh, Hell of a Boss-themed hellhounds. Nice. Um, they still do uh, MLP content from time to time. They hmm. they even met some Seven. friends while Seven. they were in the uh, Seven. in the nice. Brony mm-hmm. fandom. I just think it's fun that I I know some friends in this fandom, and like it means that I can learn more about about the series even at, from an outsider perspective. Hold on. That's, and of course, uh, that's nice. Even and of course, even though I am wa- watching it, I'm still enjoying it. That's yep. That's really good. It's good always to you know have more. Uh, like I say, I go back from the show too, from time to time, to also watch it, and it, it does hold up. I will admit, some of the episodes maybe not so much as they did when they first came out, but it is a show overall that I feel has aged and will age probably pretty good. With a couple of exceptions, but for the most part, yeah. it is still a really, really well done show. It has aged pretty well since it first premiered. I mean, the later episodes may have not as well as it's earlier, okay. but still. Yep, exactly. So, um, Math, what would you have to say? Do you, would you say you were a brony, or did you know any bronies? Uh, I knew some bronies, because that's just how it goes online. I was never a brony myself. What I am is a fan of Lauren Faust's work. Nice. So I ended up uh, waiting until roughly the series was over and then watching the whole thing through. And yeah, it's a really good series because you can, even though Faust uh, wasn't involved after season one, you can absolutely see the core of her work. Uh, loved Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Loved uh, her contributions to Powerpuff Girls and Codename Kid Next Door. You uh, can oh, wait, tell what? What? this from what? Yeah, all of her she worked on Kid Next Door. Say again? Oh, dang. Uh, yeah, like, uh, uh, it's because I love her work, her style, her... Uh, uh, everything that she does, so I knew that I was going to like this series at some nice. point. Yeah. yeah. I all, There's also Wander Over Yonder and uh, Kid Cosmic. Those are very good series that she uh, worked with on Craig Mc, with, alongside definitely, Craig McCracken. Definitely they are. Yeah. I highly recommend them as well. So, um, Jordan, what would you have to say? Were you a brony or did you know any bronies? I was indeed a Pega sister, as they have <laughs> in the brony world. Yes. Uh, during I think Generation Three or yeah Generation Three, I liked I loved the My Little Ponies, but when I'm, mostly because of Rainbow Dash back in the old times, <laughs> but with nice. the new generation of the fourth one, I'm like okay, it's been a long time. Let's see how this turns out. I immediately be like, oh my god, this connects to me in so many ways. Mostly because of mm. two characters, Apple ja- Applejack and Rainbow Dash connect to me, and I'm like, oh, this is so cute, and heartstrings have been pulled from the series. Mm. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I actually uh, watched, like, Gen 3 and, like, one episode of Gen 1. So, yeah, I can, uh, I can definitely see where you're coming from. Ooh, nice. Nice to hear that. And, uh, yeah. Evie, uh, unfortunately, does not have his microphone, but he still is able to uh, contact us. He said that uh, he can't bring himself to watch the show because he's in the mindset that he has to be ashamed of himself, which I have to admit, that is... Uh, you don't really have to be. You know that I mean? It's just, you don't you know, have to be. Yeah. No one is going to judge you for liking and watching a cartoon, no matter what it is, mm-hmm. you know? That's, that's what it really is uh, all about, you know, with the show. It's a very, uh, very well-made show. Very... Uh, 
very fun show, and it's something that has brought a lot of people joy. And I feel like at this point, it's better to be positive than negative about uh, mm -hmm. things, even though it's yeah. fun to make fun of like bad stuff. You know, as a whole, you can't be like that all the time, or you know, you go stir crazy. So sometimes it's good mm -hmm. just to have something like that, just to watch and unwind, and uh, exactly, just to really relax. And um, now we are going to ask our guest of the episode, uh, Sharvoon. Were you a brony, or did you know any bronies? <clears throat> yes. I okay. am a brony. I Damn. was a brony, or I am a brony. Or rather, I'm... Well, but I'm not an active participant in the community. I'm Damn. a casual watcher. I was... I was a... F I... I was basically a fan ever since the first episode. Like, I was... I, it was... When the hub was replacing Discovery Kids, and I was like, well, that sucks, but let's see what the hub has. I saw they had Pound Puppies, they had Transformers, they had Strawberry Shortcake, and of course they had My Little Pony. And that one, for some reason, that sort of clicked with me. I was like, okay, I'm interested. I'll watch. I think I'll watch. I was literally watching the first episode. By the end, I was like, how does it end? What do they do? What's going to happen? And from when that point, it, when from did that, it start? Ever, and where did it stop? Time is important. And, time is important. Yeah, we get it. We get it. But yeah, continue. Yeah, continue. Continue. From that point on, I began to love the show more and more. Like to me, it was coming up. It was coming from. It, it's similar to what you were saying, but also this was during a time after Avatar: The Last Airbender and Teen Titans, mm. where it was during a sort of awkward period in animation. Mm. animation wasn't really doing anything that was considered memorable or even that great it was mostly just kid distraction while parents were My unless you count flapjack which <laughs> and batman and, the brave and the bold and and technically chowder but those shows were kind of lumped together with other shows that weren't really awful but didn't really leave much of an impact either this mm. show along with adventure time in my opinion brought attention back to the animation community in mm. at least in television like this was this was sort of an audience gatherer like it proved it showed audiences holy crap animation for kids is is can entertain adults too and that's what let in my opinion what helped sort of get gravity fall successful and let other artists like the creators of steven universe the owl house and she-ra to push the boundaries and the ghost of Molly McGee, too. That yeah, is like, very appropriate. I did not consider me, that, but yeah, yeah that to is me, very, like, very appropriate. While I don't think the show's influenced the influence the creators, I feel like the, the show influenced the audience, which therefore mm. it, it which therefore uh influenced Influence the creators. creators to take more chances. So to Indeed. me on top of that, to me, M I will get this out of the way. MLP Friendship is magic. I don't think is a is the best show of the 2010s decades. I feel like oh, others no, no. are I think, so much I think better. I think you'd be hard pressed to uh, to say that. Yeah. To me, ML, it's not as good as say Steven Universe, Gravity Falls, the even dare I say other show. It's definitely not. It's it's definitely up there, but it's nowhere near the front run. But it's one of my. It's my absolute personal favorite. Because to me, these characters are just so likable, and as you said, it's a in between between it's an in between show between episodic and lore heavy. Like they did play it sort of in between there. Like it was a perfect middle ground to get lore based shows back on the map. You know? Yeah, they, indeed, yes, yeah. We, we understand oh, exactly. It, it put, it, it, also, hi Python. Hi. <laughs> to me, me personally, at least. While I don't think this show, well, I don't, what, the, what I mean to say is this was this, this was something that put lore, this and Adventure Time helped bring, put lore shows back on the map in terms of oh, animation. Oh, definitely, definitely. Absolutely, yeah. Also, and in um, my opinion, we have a, uh, I'm sorry, I can go ahead and finish. Uh, to me, this is the, and from, and as the show continued, it pushed, it, it all, did push one boundary. It pushed the boundary of how much continuity and how because the thing is stuff that would usually be safe for the final happened before 
yeah, Twilight we becoming yeah. a princess. The Cutie Mark Crusaders getting their Cutie Mark. Rarity yes, getting exactly. her critique. This was a show ex saying that life happens, change happens, but even if one door closes, yeah, yes, there's exactly. always a there's always a chance for it to improve. Indeed. Oh yeah. Yeah. While yes. I have been hesitant to come forward about my love for this show, I can say for certain that looking back on this show, even if other shows will catch my interest, MLP will always have a. Oh, definitely, definitely. It also, always have a also, big uh, influence. Yes. Also, the songs oh, yeah. kick ass. Definitely, oh yeah, definitely. the songs certainly also, kick ass. Absolutely. Also, um, for those of you listening to this, uh, we just just had another guest show up, uh, Python. So we just yeah, did our I've question of the week, and now we'll uh, add you in this as well. Um, were you a brony, or did you know any? Was I a brony, or did I know any? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the question of this episode. Uh, no, I don't believe I know any, and I wasn't really a brony. I was just like a low-key enjoyer. Oof. Eh. I mean, I like the show, I like the characters, but I'm like, I'm not like collecting thousands of dollars worth of merchandise. <laughs> I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm sort of similar. I'm not really collecting merchandise or creating content. I, I, I collect yet. comics, honestly. I, uh, I'm not much of a collector of anything either, but you know, I do, I have uh, watched a show in the past and that as I... I haven't, I, I have, I'm, and I've had confidence issues where I was too afraid to make participate in the community but that might change in the future after who knows what the future holds indeed i've collected a little bit of my little ponies mostly again for applejack or rainbow dash mostly rainbow dash because tomboyish tomgirlish in a way it's me to me I my a little bit of, of the merchandise my personal favorite characters are rare my personal favorite characters are uh applejack or no 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 um Sorry, that's what's a slip of the tongue. My personal favorite characters were uh, Fluttershy and, most importantly, Twilight Sparkle. These were the characters that I connected with the hardest and connected with the most. Yep. To me. Mm. Yes, same. exactly. Yes, yes, same here, same here. So, now it is time for the uh, patent-pending uh, Dragonus scale, where we rank the Dragonus episode. Today we're ranking Smolder and... Uh, last time we did this, of course, the episode of uh, fr the earlier episode on Friendship is Magic, I gave uh, Ember a perfect score of 10 out of 10. Smolder <laughs> is not going to get that because, you know, I don't know if she's 10 out of 10 worthy. I am going to give her a... I might give her a 7 out of 10, maybe an 8, actually. If I'm feeling generous, I might give her an 8 because I like the design. I like what they do with the dynamics between her and the other dragons, and... It actually provided a nice little uh, foil to Spike, where he didn't really have one before. And it's something that is uh, very, yeah. very uh, interesting. Foil! You know, I like a... That's my foil! She, exactly, but <laughs> no, no, she really was a she was a character that I honestly feel they could have introduced a few seasons earlier, and it would have worked out a little bit better. Indeed, yeah. Yep. So that's going to be my score. I'm going to give her an 8 out of 10, which... Uh, Again, in this episode in particular, she had a lot of good moments, especially to see how she interacted with the other dragons in comparison to how she usually does. And again, she provided a very nice dynamic where there was not one before, which is why I'm going to give her an 8 out of 10. So, um, and Ron, what would you have to say? I'm also going to give her an 8 out of 10 because, yeah, she's a good foil. She definitely had some rough moments and came off as a little bit... uh apathetic or even a little uh not nice but at the end of the day she does show uh some sign of caring and for that and for that that's definitely something that uh gives her a higher score and like you said she's a pretty good foil to spike like spike has no idea how how uh to ultimately be a dragon and has been a little uh, hesitant to understand stuff but with smolder uh she's a little more certain about herself and yet is willing to learn about friendship they're both willing to learn off each other and that's pretty impressive all things considered so i'm definitely gonna give her an 8 out of 10 for that reason i wish she was uh, I, I i understand the gripes like i wish she, there was more done with her and i wish she didn't have her more rough moments but She's she's definitely learning. She's come a long way, and I really appreciate that. So, yeah, eight out of ten. 
That's a uh, yep. Those are all a uh, very good reason. That um, striker. What would you have to give her? I'm going to give her a nine because I Ooh. kind of feel like I have a personal connection with this character, nice. mainly because she reminds me of my own sister. Mm. Good. Nice. Like, uh, plus, like, I actually kind of was impressed with her. Just. Not just because of her character design, but because of how she was written, because of the uh, voice direction they went with her. It's just, <laughs> it was, I don't know how to describe the, the, vo uh, the voice the voice for it. It's just, it works for her perfectly. Yeah, like, because your sister always sounded like a gruff dragon. Okay. <laughs> no, actually, no. It's just the personality that reminds me of my little sister. Yeah. She always <laughs> acts like the older sibling is the thing. And she has, like, in much like uh, Garble, she has, like, this sort of control over me. No, God. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh. It's a sort of power over me. And it's just, and for some reason, just in my, from uh, my position, uh, Live in the beat, hello, older, I actually just was very much impressed with, with, uh, mm -hmm. uh, with her, just her in general. Like, I yeah. liked her a lot. I liked her a lot. Yeah. And uh, at times, yeah. even why. more so than Ember. Nice. I definitely can see why. Yeah. Also, I can uh, can understand it. also, I want to make a live, a live in La Vida Loca joke, but I think that would be too exactly. easy. Yeah, yeah we, we understand. So, uh, Matt, what would you give uh, Smolder? So, first, I'm going to preface this by saying I'm a 90s kid. So, there nice. are two girl tropes that any 90s kid grew up with a ton with. Oh, yeah, boy. Goth and the tomboy. Same. Um, so I liked 90s the kid tomboy nice girls too. more. I, th there was just something about them that worked uh, really well, especially when they were done really well. The, that sort of like a uh, rough, gruff, but heart of gold style character. Yeah, Spinelli same. from Recess is the best example of this, I think. It's what I grew up on as well, oh, like the yeah. tomboy characters. I did too. Even though I didn't grow up in the 90s, I grew up on those 90s reruns. Yep, late yep. 90s, early 2000s, boy, right here. Yep. Same. Same here. With all that said, Same -sies. she <laughs> is a 10 out of 10 for me. <laughs> Ooh, whoa. Great. Great. Well, damn. Nice. Whoa. is... Uh, something that this show was missing and really needed. She is a tomboy <laughs> character. You can make the argument that Rainbow Dash was that. I made the argument. Rainbow Dash is the sporty girl. We didn't have a tomboy girl in the show before. I she... technically say both her, both Rainbow Dash and Applejack, honestly. That's fair. fair. They're, they're pretty, fair, they're, fair they bounce enough. out in that regard. They do, uh, yes. Older is the, the stereotypical tomboy. She's rough, she's gruff. She has the heart of gold. She's very kind, caring when she needs to be. Uh, I love her snarky demeanor because the, the dragons seem to be great with that in general. Yeah. Uh, very yeah. good design. Very, uh, just works on every level. And I love uh, all the scenes she's in. She is my second favorite of the student six. And nice. probably my favorite that they have episodes focus on of those characters. She's rough, she's gruff, and she's got all the right stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Anyways, next. Yep. Um, let's go with Jordan. What would you give uh, Smolder? Jordy? Jordan, Jordan, you there? Jordan? Uh, all right, all right. Well, we'll come back. We'll come back there. We'll come back there. Uh, Lucky Evie has decided to give us Smolder oh, wait, she's a back. seven out of ten. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, I love Ember from her from the first character. You, like the first time you see her, I love her attitude. In this episode, I wish they would give her more. But the reaction when uh Fluttershy Fluttershy said that if all those eggs were hers, you see the expression on her. She's like, no. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we're talking about uh, we're talking about uh, Smolder though, not Ember. Talking about Smolder. Uh, I'm gonna say Smolder. My bad. I'm gonna say that. Uh, you can also do Ember <laughs> as well. Sorry, sorry. So what what score would you give her? 
Seven out of ten. Okay. Uh, they didn't okay. give her a whole lot, but when you see her to a point where the dragons have screwed up the hatching grounds, you see how her her lord self comes out and tells them, like, hey, you guys need to put all this stuff back the way it is. And they're like, okay, yep, yep, definitely, totally. You're <laughs> my bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My yeah, city, my yeah, rules, my yeah. town. Sure, sure, sure. Anyways, what about Smolder? Ma. For Smolder? You said a 7 out of 10 for that. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. Yep, All right. said a 7 out of 10. So, yep, that's a good one. Uh, Lucky Evie has, has also decided to give uh, Smolder a 7 out of 10. All and right. his reasoning is that uh, he likes her design quite a bit, which is a very, very uh, good uh, idea. And let's go with our two guests. We'll start with uh, Charvoon, the one who was here earlier. What score would you give Smolder on our uh, Dragonist scale? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to give, I since I wasn't here for the Gone Fire, and, uh, I'll give Ember a, ten and a half, nine and a half out of ten because, uh, uh, she ten. Really, okay. because she doesn't really make more appearances out of that. But in terms <laughs> of Smolder, if you were to ask me, Episode wise, I give her an eight out of t- an eight, maybe eight point five out of ten because I'm more of a silver stream and Ocellus girl. I like the more energized and sensitive type more. But oh, nice. Mulder was really funny here. She was really great. It's great seeing great development. She's a fun character, but honestly, part of me does kind of also her design is great, and she's really funny in terms of the episode at least. Because I do feel like they sh- that she was turned too much of a blind eye to uh, Spike's abuse. Yeah, As for, I can understand yeah. that. If you if you ask me in terms of the show overall, I'd give her a nine. I'd give her a solid nine out of ten. All right. But, so but that, we'll but, mark that down as nine then. Well, to me, if we if we ever talk about what lies beneath in the future, I have some opinions. It's, yeah, we definitely might do that, and yeah, me, it's, we'll uh, well, that could be interesting again, to talk about. It, to me, oh, um, um, for my sort of palate cleanser, uh, or it might extend the time, for if for those who wanted to make more money off of the Generation 4, they should have just went ahead and make a spinoff focusing on the Student 6. On yeah. Smolder, on definitely, Dallas, definitely. on that Sandbar, way Silver Street, yes. on Celis, Yona. I know it's not meant My Little Pony, and it's not Generation 4, but it's Generation 4.5. Five, basically, it's that would have been uh, the real four point five. It would have yep, been a, exactly following their adventure, seeing them not become the new elements of harmony or the new characters, but becoming the becoming basically a fresh face for the franchise, a fresh start. Like have an opportunity where the main six becomes from go from the students to the masters. Yeah, that would be interesting. That was an opportunity staring you in the face, and you were like, eh, let's yep, reboot let's it. Let's do Sunny. Yeah, oh, yeah. God. It was, oh, man. It reminds me of uh, this freaking thing where it's like this what? one, uh, these one YouTubers are uh, looking at freaking, uh, di- are looking at the, uh, are watching the MLP Gen 5 movie, and one of them, and with a, there's this bit where, like, uh, Sunny is uh, catching, Sunny caught the uh, Earth Pony gem, but, like, one of them's like, Sunny! And just toss it, and it's like, glass-breaking sound effect. Oh, shit! 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways, let's let's move on. We'll get to yeah. Gen 5 when we get we'll to it. We'll talk about that in the future, Python. definitely. And, um, Python, what score would you give uh, Smolder from uh, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic? Okay, so I barely remember her, and I know, she, so I had to look her up. Uh, okay, all good. Uh, I guess a one out of ten for not being at the forefront of my memory. Uh, we'll, we'll just mark it down as N slash A then. It's okay. If you, if you feel you can't give her like an objective score, then that's okay. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll just mark it down as uh, N slash A in this case, and uh, you can always come back to it uh, in the future. Yeah, of course. Yep. yep. But that's gonna be it for this week. If you have any questions, or if you want to give us your take on Garble's poetry, you oh, can God. email us at fierydiscourse <laughs> at outlook dot com, or visit us on Twitter at twitter dot com, or email us at e- oh, sorry, don't touch it there. Uh, you can email us at fierydiscourse at outlook dot com, or visit us at twitter at twitter dot com slash fierydiscourse. The Next site formerly we'll- known as Twitter. 
Yeah, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Next yeah. time we'll be discussing the 1994 slash 1995 Happy Nest Secret of the Lock episode. There's a world of Nessies. What you are not going to believe what else the people who made this cartoon worked on. I did oh, some boy. research and you are never going to believe this. this In a million years. Very interesting. But yeah, to watch this uh, really forgotten uh, you know, 90s toy cartoon. But that'll be it for this episode on a toy-based cartoon. And until next time, thank you guys so much for listening and take care. Later. Bye. Bye-bye. Adios. Peace out. See you Bye. next week. Uh, Adios. Adios. This is going to be more, more of the fifth Nessie that we've talked about at this point. <laughs>